My name is Soon Young Warren, and I've been painting and teaching how to use watercolor for many years. Today, I will demonstrate basic steps to capture the nature and fleeting moments of water for a painting full of movement and the reflections of surrounding trees and sky. The process will show you how to create an intimate composition and how to use drawing and layering color to create these effects. When you are doing wet to wet wash, it is usually good to use 300 pounds because I'm using 300 pounds on this paper because when you are using wet to wet, 140 pounds, it buckles pretty bad. And this particular painting that I start, uh, decide to use 300 pounds because I'm going to use lots of swiggly line and when it buckles, it is hard to continue going on uh, for the dead line to uh, continue going on. So. I am using 300 pounds for the, this one. And I wanted to talk about why I use, uh, decide to um, mask uh, these leaves. And this is actually yellow and some of those um, pine needle. But I didn't mask any of this lighter color of the water because I decided to use mask this area because I didn't want blue to go into my yellowish or reddish uh, color. So the main thing I wanted to do is, this area is a little lighter, and it's kind of, that's why I had the cerulean blue. And that area is gonna be spread out, and later, bottom part is gonna be more like ultramarine color is getting into it. So that's what I'm going, that's my uh, main um, purpose I'm doing, but if it does go a different way, and I will deal with it that way. So, yes, I spray this water. Kind of half sheet, it doesn't matter much using this spray bottle, but when I'm using 300 pounds um, and when I'm using full sheets, sometimes a lot easier to spray this uh, spray bottle to begin with and you don't have to dip with your brush so many times. So make sure you wet this entire paper completely. All right, I think this is all wet. And I will choose cerulean blue on top. Instead of pouring over this time, I will actually apply with brush so I can control it a little better. And this stage actually sets the, um, most of the color of the water, lighter color of the water. This area, hard, um, dark line, I'm actually drawing tip of my brush. I'm not laying my brush down at this time because I'm just using this tip of, kind of, I'm up, so making it so almost like writing a calligraphic, calligraph, so it's kind of, I'm using line with a big brush, using twisted, kind of a wiggers through it. And this is my dark line. So I'm not drawing every line, just filling it up like this. I'm just using wiggers. If this kind of big line comes on and I will just fill it up, that's okay. But that's what I'm, my thing is just kind of find the strong line, thick line. And when I come to these edges, I'm going to use a little bit of yellow. Changing my brush. It's greenish yellow, how about that? And when I do this, and actually I will blend this one out because I don't have these hard edges. And when I do this, and you see, I'm just kind of touching this edge, tip of my brush, and it's touching this edge of this line to just kind of spread out a little bit. So I'm going, instead of using a round brush, I'm going to use a brush that way, actually, I can apply this one quickly, not disturbing this undercoat. So I'm going to try where the darkest area. So if I will see how much it comes out, oh, I like that. So I can actually keep going there. As I see it, I'm making this bottom part. You see it? If, if you see it, you can see top part clean water and I can actually add water and just bottom part is the darker. So when I water, apply it, top part is gonna be lighter and blend naturally and bottom part, I am starting to apply color. So 
just if I want to clean it, I just take this with my water off, and I'll just this. I can just make this area a little darker. And around this corner. So I switch my brush to the other side. If you don't feel comfortable, you can use round brush, but it takes a little longer. But I just wanted to apply this one quickly as possible. So some of the those that are white spot that is coming out is the where all those the fallen leaves on top of the water. So some of them are very uh, dark need to submerge into the uh, parts of water. And some of them is stands out to sparkle this whole painting. And now after this, I'm going to apply for the, these leaves. And I have this same palette and I'm going to use, I want to have very bright yellow, which is going to be um, permanent yellow light. I think that's going to be brighter than cadmium yellow. So I'm going to apply this. You know, since when I have cadmium yellow, if you can, uh, as you can see it, I don't mind some of the yellow, previous yellow mixing into it. So I will just go like that. And when I'm doing it, some of the area white, just a little bit, I will leave this white area here and there. I have a little speck where it came in because when I apply frisket, a frisket was, wasn't thick enough, so it came through. But I think this is what I call it, I didn't mean to, it happened, but for me, that's more like the leaves being have little marking, so I think that's better. So I'm not gonna even worry about it. At this time too, I'm not trying to shape this one in any at all, I just kind of covering up, I'm just applying all those color to get rid of this white. If you see, I just apply this one freely as I can because I don't mind actually going outside of the line, white line. Because if you see water always, it's not like just one line, it's because actually going outside of this, your white line is better because it just gives you that another dimension of reflection. Mm -hmm.